Back to our breaking news where a water main break is still causing some issues up along Foothill Boulevard. Let's go live to Alex Cabrillo. Alex, what's the latest? You know, Mike, uh, Jason Acey with Salt Lake City Fire Department here is going to give a press briefing to the media to kind of update on the latest information that he has. The good news, it sounds like there is no, there are no injuries, so that's always the good news. Jason, go ahead. So this, mor or this evening, a little before 10 o'clock, Salt Lake City Fire Department responded to a water problem here at the intersection of 1700 South and Foothill Drive. When our crews arrived, they found water uh, going down the road. Our crews worked quickly to lay some large diameter hose along the road to try and prevent that water from affecting homes. We've called in the power company to assess the situation with the large power line here at the intersection. Uh, we've also uh, called, uh, asked them to evaluate the electrical issues with any homes that could have suffered from any of the flooding. As of right now, we do not have in, any injuries reported, and we're asking residents in the area to do a couple things. We're asking them to stay clear of this intersection and also to start storing water in their home. Once this water is completely turned off, we're not certain how that's going to affect the homes in the area, if they're still going to have water, if they will have to go without water for a period of time. So we're asking people to store water in their homes, fill up any containers that they have with water, and also it's a good idea to fill up your bathtub with water. And that way you have some extra water just in case the water is off. Uh, it looks like behind you the water's pretty much stopped flowing. I, I know you've been busy with us. Have you heard if, if the water line's been shut off, Jason? I have not been heard, but I have looked over as you guys have and, and seen that it's, it's slowing down, which is a good sign. We're hoping that once that gets turned off, we'll be able to better assess the homes in, uh, that are down the street and uh, try and solve any issues with flooding. Any idea how this happened or, or why this happened, Jason? As of right now, we don't know how it started. Um, that'll all probably be determined later. Uh, but as of right now, we're just doing everything that we can to fix the situation. Okay, Jason, thank you very much for your time again. Uh, at this point, looks like the water line is shut off over here right now. So the next part is just assessing exactly how much damage they have over here. There were some homes, we were told, that were flooded, but we don't know exactly how many homes. The good news is it seems like nobody was injured. The next step now is the investigation, exactly what happened and what needs to be done to help those people just down 1700 South here who were flooded. Back to you guys. All right, Alex Cabrera live for us tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex, thanks tonight. Um, we're going to switch gears here for a moment. She was born before her family's home actually had a phone, electric lights, or even a car. But it doesn't mean a Minnesota woman is too old for technology, you could say. Anna Stair is the state's most senior citizen. She's going to turn 114 years old in just a few days, and she is a very big fan of FaceTime. Well, she video chats on her iPad with people all over the world. But recently, when she wanted to join Facebook, she couldn't. Facebook would not accept Stair's birthday October 15th of 1900. No, I couldn't get in because it's an invalid date. It's far, way too far back. Apparently way, way far back. So Anna Stair went old school, dusted off the old typewriter and wrote a letter to Facebook. She said, quote, I'm still here. And while she hasn't heard back yet, she is using Facebook. She just had to lie just a little bit, Dave, about her age. Finally know somebody who was alive when the Cubs won the World <laughs> Series. It's the story we've been happy to tell. A Springville boy with Down syndrome had just one wish for his ninth birthday, 99 birthday cards. His request went viral, and his new specialist, Ashley Kewish, reports he received so much more than he ever expected, including a big surprise tonight. Ashley, live in Utah County. Ashley. Yeah, Rhett Bird has had to endure a number of surgeries in his small and short life, but his uh, parents said one of his favorite things while he was in the hospital was receiving cards like this. So it really wasn't a huge surprise to them when that's what he asked for for his birthday. But what started as uh, cards just coming in the mail sure hit a lot closer to home tonight. <coughs> Holy cow, look at all these friends! On Rhett's ninth birthday this past Tuesday. <laughs> He got everything he wanted as the birthday cards rolled in. And they haven't stopped. Every night since then has been spent like this. It's your birthday, and you're winning the race. What do you think about this? I'm good. The first couple of days, we were able to open and read everything. But not anymore. The buzz is on. It's his birthday, you know. Cards have poured in by the thousands from all over oh, the world. Is that cool? Italy and uh, Switzerland, Hawaii, Alaska, almost every state. <laughs> But 
right here in his home state and hometown, they're doing something to take his birthday wish even further. And as you all know, Brett is truly a Salem Hill High School superhero. <laughs> For his birthday, the Salem Hill Skyhawks made him a part of the team. And of course, his jersey is number nine. <laughs> took it from there. <laughs> it takes a lot to not choke up and sit here and cry thinking about how much people actually care that have never met him. And during the game tonight, they announced the final of the birthday card total. Get this, 10,979 birthday cards all came in for this little boy. And guys, the, uh, the birthday cards, they just keep on coming, showing that he has a lot of support here in this community and throughout the world. Ashley, that is spectacular. Thank you for that good news report on a perfect night for the family and a perfect night for football outside. I would say so. It's great out there, isn't it? It is. It's feeling pretty good, although folks heading into the second half of the weekend may have to add a couple more layers because we are going to have some cooler conditions moving in. But great day today, and tomorrow is going to be another great day, too. Don't let me fool you, but we are going to have some changes starting to push in by tomorrow night. Temperatures right now down into the 50s, mid and upper 50s along the Wasatch Front. Logan down to 50 degrees even, and we've got... Uh, Mid and upper 50s out in the Uinta Basin as well. 60s down the I-15 corridor with a 72 at St. George. But you look off to the west, we still got clear skies. So clear skies overnight and we will start off with sunshine in the morning. Temperatures right around 52 degrees. And we will once again work our way back into the lower 70s. But as we head into the afternoon, cloud cover is going to roll in. That's all ahead of a cold front that's going to set up uh, the stage to be a little bit cooler for us on Sunday. But right now, lots of high pressure, as you can see with all that clearing. Jet stream trying to pull a little activity in, but it's sending everything either to the north or to the south. We've got a little bit of that split flow, so right now, Things are calm, but all that cooler air is eventually going to be heading our direction as we get ready to make our way into the second half of the weekend. But overnight, clear skies. Still talking about uh, temperatures warming up very nicely on Saturday with sunshine in the morning. Afternoon, we'll hit 70s with that cloud cover starting to roll in in the afternoon ahead of that cold front. And that's uh, we're not really going to feel the impacts of that until we make our way into the day on Sunday. That's where highs will fall into the 60s along the Wasatch Front. Not only that, we could be talking about the potential for uh, some precipitation, very light, very isolated in the northern mountains and western Uintas. Most of us will stay dry, though. We'll just notice the cooler air. So if you uh, plan on heading to the Weaver State game, starts at 1, partly cloudy skies. Temperature still near 70 degrees by halftime. Enjoyable day. Get out there and enjoy. But a little bit further north, if you're going to be going to check out Utah State play Air Force, partly cloudy skies. Game's at 815, so temperatures will be in the 50s. 50s, and by the time it's all said and done, it's going to be in the 40s. So long sleeves, a jacket, and even a blanket would not be out of the question, despite the fact that we will have a little cloud cover. Going to be a little cool up there in the Cache Valley area. As for everywhere else, we're still looking at decent conditions on Saturday. Really no changes from today, but much cooler on Sunday, especially northern mountains and Uinta Mountains with only highs in the 30s as the cloud cover rolls in for us. So tomorrow's still a nice day. We'll have temperatures again starting in the 40s, some cases 50s, and back up to near 70s for the entire state. You want a basin up to upper 60s, lower 70s. Moab 73, Loa 67 degrees, Green River 74 with sunshine for a good chunk of the day. Western forecast, same deal. Sunshine most of the day with temperatures heading back to the lower 70s or upper 60s. St. George 85, down to 79 with that cold front coming in and then temperatures kind of bouncing all over the place as we head into next week here along the Wasatch Front. We'll go 50s or upper 40s to the 70s. Sunshine in the morning, clouds in the afternoon, and then a little bit cooler for us on Sunday and Monday. All right, we'll take it. Thanks, Dan. Spotlight is on the top dogs, the Bingham Miners. And let's get out to Bingham High School. Rod, it's all yours. All right, guys, thanks. Yeah, game night live, week eight of the high school football season. When we come back to Bingham, we will show you all the big plays of this Friday night schedule.